Hey friends, uh, welcome to another video of training. Uh, today we're going to be going over a pump down. Uh, what is a pump down and how do you do one? And, and have in mind that we can only do a pump down on a split system, not on a package unit. So now I'm going to grab the camera and show you why we can only do it on a split system and not a package unit. So with the split system, the actual word itself kind of gives you the answer. The air conditioning system is split. So it, maybe you have one of these at home or you're, you work on them on a day-to-day -day basis, but the condenser, the outdoor coil is outside and then the evaporator coil is inside the house, maybe in a closet, in a basement or up in the attic. So really you have three places where refrigerant can exist and um, an air conditioning split system. Your evaporator or your indoor coil your condenser, which is your outdoor coil, and your line set. So this line set is what joins both of these together. And really, you have two lines right here. You have what is the suction line and then the liquid line. So you got three places where it can exist, uh, where refrigerant can exist. So let's say you need to recover the refrigerant because you're going to do some bracing. You have to cut the line. Maybe you have to replace the evaporator coil. Maybe you have to replace the piston or the TXV. Um, so in that case, if you just go ahead and brace with refrigerant inside it, that's dangerous. If you go ahead and get a copper cutter and cut it, refrigerant's gonna leak out. But with the pump down, which I'll show you briefly, we're able to use the system's compressor to push all the refrigerant into the condenser. So now, you have access to the actual line set and the evaporator to do any work. But that's what a pump down is. We're able to push with the help of the compressor, push all the refrigerant into the condenser. And now my refrigerant is stuck in there. And now I'm able to access the line set or the evaporator coil for repairs or replacement. Now, the reason why we cannot do it with the, with the package unit, a package unit is not split into two. You got your condenser coil in there and then your evaporator in there. It's not split. This is a two in one deal, a package unit. So for this, you would have to use a recovery machine with the recovery tank and your recovery steps to recover refrigerant out. But with a split system, um, can you do a recovery machine? Yeah, you can, why not? But you can also do the, the pump down method if um, you're gonna work on the line set or on the evaporator coil. Have in mind though, if you have a leak in the condenser, if you have to replace the compressor, um, you cannot do a pump down because you cannot store the refrigerant in the condenser and then um, replace the compressor. There's refrigerant in there. Or you got a brace because there's a leak in there. You're gonna push all the refrigerant here. It's just gonna leak out more. You can only do it if you're gonna do repairs on the line set and on the evaporator coil. Okay, so before we go into the actual pump down uh, demonstration, I just wanted to briefly just draw this just to kind of give you a general idea of what's actually going on. And you already know I'm no Pablo Picasso. I do not uh, draw well. But um, the idea behind this is you have a split system. So you got the condenser, your compressor, the discharge line going to your condenser coil comes out as your liquid line all the way to the metering device here. And then it goes to your evaporator coil and then it comes back out as a suction line to your compressor. Okay. So the, the, um, the flow of the refrigerant though, it's very important to understand that on your liquid line, it's going this way to my metering device. Okay. So have in mind, this is a straight cooling system. If um, you're doing a heat pump, it has to be in cooling mode. But in this case right here, it's going this way, like that. And then the suction line, the refrigerant is going that way. So it's important to understand that. So um, on a package unit, you will not see service valves, which a split system will have, which I'll show you right now in a bit when we do the pump down. Um, with the service valves, it's important to understand front seat and back seat. So when you have something front seated, it's actually closed. And so what that means is you have this, this mechanism here, this part here, when you front seat it, it's actually pushing through. So imagine the car as refrigerant, right? This is just refrigerant. 
If it's front seated, well, it's closed. It can't go through. If it's back seated, it's open, right? There's a passage for the car or for the refrigerator to travel through. So you're gonna see how I can um, uh, manipulate that with the service wrench as we go over that right now in a bit. So back seated, we're opening, front seated, we're closing. Okay, so with the pump down, with the pump down, a couple of steps. Before turning the compressor on, these are the steps. We're gonna close the liquid line valve. And I know a lot of guys out on the field will like to um, run the system on, like uh, turn on the compressor, let it run, and then they close the service valve for the liquid line. Um, but you can technically start it right away. You can just 100% close the liquid line valve, which I'll show you right now. As the compressor is on, remember the compressor is on, right? It's pushing the refrigerant. If I close the liquid line completely off, you see that right there, off, all the refrigerant is gonna be backing up on my condenser coil right here. It's gonna be backing up, backing up. That's where you're gonna be looking at your gauges and you're gonna see the numbers drop. And this is just a little tip, your service valve for your suction, you wanna, you wanna already have that closed halfway because that takes a long time to close completely. So you wanna have that halfway. So you start off with the liquid line, close 100%, half close the suction valve, turn on the compressor, and I'm gonna show you how to turn it on with um, uh, by pushing the contactor. Some guys like to call for cooling. Um, for me, if you're by yourself, just get an insulated screwdriver, which I'll show you, push the contactor, and that's gonna push the compressor to push the refrigerant. And as the, comp as the compressor is on, and this is closed, and that's half closed, all the refrigerant is backing up here on the condenser. And then once my gauges, cause now my, my liquid line, my high side is gonna drop down and my suction is gonna start dropping down too. You're gonna start to close the suction valve that's already halfway closed. You're gonna start to close that. Now this is very important though. Um, on a reciprocating compressor, you can actually um, let the low side gauge or really both, but it's more the low side, drop all the way to zero, all the way to zero. Go ahead and pump everything out, push all the refrigerant into the condenser. And so to kind of get an idea with the reciprocating compressor, I'll put a picture right here. Recipro reciprocating compressors are the bigger the, the, bigger, the um, bigger compressors. They tend to have uh, like a blanket over them for like noise, noise reduction, but they're just a lot bigger. They're huge. With those, you're able to go to zero. Uh, with a scroll compressor, which are the most common, these are the ones that you you like, you like, probably will see out in the field. Those, you want to close the suction valve, uh, suction line service valve, when it gets to 5 to 10 PSI. A scroll compressor does not like to work under vacuum. It can damage it. So you want to close it 5 to 10 PSI. It's very little, 5 to 10 PSI. At that point, you only have vapor pressure, which you can... Um, as a de minimis, kind of going to the to the ambient, but closer to five, right? But you don't want to go down to zero. You don't want that scroll compressor uh, to work under a vacuum. And another thing too, like I said earlier, you do not want to do a pump down if you have a leak in the condenser or if you have a micro channel uh, condenser. Um, I've heard some guys say that you can do a pump down on a micro channel condenser, but I wouldn't just because the micro channel condensers, the surface area, like you can see right here, I'll put a picture of it. Um, the surface area of the micro channel of the tubing is a lot smaller. You might not be able to put all, all, the, um, all the refrigerant into the condenser. So these are just some of the things just to have in mind. And now we're gonna go ahead and um, show you how to do the pump down. Okay, so we need three things to do a pump down. We need our gauges, which we already have connected to the system, right? We have our uh, blue hose connected to the suction line, our red hose connected to the liquid line. So that's done. Uh, we also need a, a screwdriver, uh, preferably a, an insulated screwdriver, um, so that when you're pushing the contactor, you're doing it safely. Um, and I preferably like one that's not too skinny on, this, on the bit because you need to push that contactor without, um, without it coming off and then having to push it again. And you'll see what I mean uh, right now. So gauges, uh, insulated screwdriver, 
and a service wrench. This is gonna be very important and you can get this uh, from a supply store. It usually comes with this little hex bit, hex adapter that you just put, put in here. And it's, the idea is the same as working on a car. It's just a service wrench. Okay, so um, what is important to understand right here, I'm gonna go ahead and put the gauges here because we're gonna, we're gonna have to keep an eye on them right now. But when dealing with the contactor here, and this is what I mean, what I what I mean, that contactor, um, everyone there's everyone does it different. Some will call for cooling from the inside, and they will put send 24 volts and push that contactor in. I like to do it this way, but uh, the idea is that you want to be able to push that. And right now the compressor turned on, but what if you accidentally like you push it and then you go, oh, whoops, let let me push it again. Oh, oh, whoops. And then if you're doing that over and over, I mean, that's not really healthy for the compressor. That's why you want to make sure that when you push it, you're able to do it on one try. Um, even if it's a second try, it's not the end of the world, but you don't want to repeat, repeatedly be doing that uh, to the compressor. Okay. And another thing too, uh, with the uh, service valve here, uh, you know, if, if it's your first time doing it, I would uh, probably... Um, probably be good for you to practice um, how to use the uh, how to use the service wrench with the service valve but let's go ahead and look at this one right here so right now that one right there is um, actually front seated as you can see so right now um, I'm gonna go ahead and back seated all the way so remember front seated is going inward to create a blockage and then back seated means to go back to open the passage. So um, this one here, if you saw earlier, that little part that was inside was kind of pushed in. But as I backseed, you're gonna see that part kind of come up right now. And you'll see what I mean right now. And this, this suction service valve, it takes a long time. So that is why this is important to get this right. But you see the little part in, in here? That was all the way in here. But now I brought it up. Now there is back seated, there is a passage, there's flow between here and here. So do you remember the steps? The steps were to close the liquid line 100% first. So right now you see, right now it is back seated. It is up, back seated, there's flow from here to here. There is 100% uh, flow. So I have to close that first. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that, you see? So I'm right now I'm closing it. I'm front seating and pushing down to block the passage. So you just got to keep going until you get there. Okay, so that's the first step. Let's go ahead and front seat all the way. Okay, so, you know, I, it doesn't take a bit because the hose is like right there. So I'm uh, hitting that. I don't have too much to work with, but there we go. You see, so we know it's front seated because it's all the way in there. You see that? It's all the way in there. So we are front seated. Okay, so that's closed. And re remember the other step, we gotta halfway close the suction. We gotta halfway close that. And this is the one that you have actually have to give it, you know, a good amount of closing. Cause this is the one that takes a long time. What I like to do, I'll just go ahead and close it all the way. And like I said, this one takes a minute. So you see, I'm still going with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and close it. There we go, now it's closed. I'm gonna go ahead and crack it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's open. I opened it about seven times. So I'm gonna have it this ready though. So I can close it. Okay, this is gonna be important right here. So I want you to look at my gauges. Let's see if I can put it. So. You guys don't have to see that one because that's already, I already closed that one. But I want to put it so you guys can see what happens to my pressures as um, right now with the pump down. So let's go ahead and, okay. So a couple of things, right? I got to push that contactor. Okay, I'm going to be pushing that contactor in there. And then you're going to see this to start to drop. And you might have to zoom in on your end, but you're going to see this start to drop. This is the one I'm going to be looking at. I do not want it to fall below 10 or 5 PSI because the scroll compressor does not like to be in a vacuum. So now I'm going to go ahead and let's see if I can. Now, I don't have three hands, so I have to make it work so you guys can see all of it. So 
I think that should be, well, that would be blocking your, your view. So let's go ahead and do this way. Okay, I'll do that way. So I'll push the contactor. I'm gonna be closing that, and I'm gonna be keeping an eye on this. I don't want it to go below um, 10 PSI or 5 PSI. So just to do a little recap, my liquid line service valve is completely closed already. This one, I already closed it more than halfway. I got an insulated screwdriver. I have an eye on this, on the, on the gauge here, and I'm gonna push that contactor. Of course, you have to have uh, voltage pressing so you can push it and the compressor can turn on. So here we go. All right, it's on. I can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it on your end, but you see this? It's, it's climbing down. You see that? That's gonna start going down. And then this is gonna start going down as you can see right now. And, and it is, it is going down. So I'm gonna be um, um, keeping an eye so that once it hits about 20 PSI or so, 20 PSI, I'm gonna start closing it so it doesn't go into lower than five PSI. So you see, just, you just gotta be patient. So I'm at 50 PSI, 50 PSI. Keeping an eye on that one, okay? It's getting down there, it's close. It's getting to 25 PSI. Okay, I'm gonna start closing it. It's at 25 PSI right now, okay? It's at 20. Okay, and then right now it's at 15, and awesome. Zero. And that one there is at, let's see if we can get it. So five, 10, about 15. So yeah, I could have um, let it uh, sit there a little bit more. I'd rather have that extra than me going into a vacuum on a scroll compressor. And a lot of that, it tends to be like a de minimis, like vapor pressure. But yeah, I tried to get it between five and 10, but you don't want to, you, want, you don't want it to go all the way to zero or even lower than zero. That would, um, that, that wouldn't be good for the compressor. And so now that it's pumped down, all my refrigerant, I have no refrigerant on the line set or the evaporator, all the refrigerant is in here now. It's in the condenser. So let's say you go ahead and um, you brace, you fix the evaporator, whatever it is that you do, all you have to do now is just, and of course, once you brace and do all that, you gotta pull a vacuum. So with where I have my hoses now, it's reading the pressure from this way, not in there, it's reading it on the line fit this way. So you pull a vacuum, you get a good vacuum, and now you can release the refrigerant. So simple, when you release it, you just go ahead and um, this part here, you, you flip it the other way, and then you just release it, okay? You release it all the way, and, and you have to go all the way open 100% on both. You keep going, keep going until it's open 100%. And I can hear the refrigerant now coming out. I can hear it, um, but of course, after you have braced and pulled the vacuum, um, make sure there's no leaks, then you can release the refrigerant into the line set, into the evaporator. But that's simple, uh, simply, uh, simply it when it comes to the pump down gauges, um, service wrench, and a uh, insulated uh, screwdriver. Uh, making sure that you have a good grab grasp on the contactor when you push it in. You don't want to be in, out, in, out. You want to make sure you grab that in, have gauges, keep an eye on that for it not to reach below 5 PSI. If it's a scroll compressor, if it's a reciprocating compressor, it can go to zero and, and you'll, be, you'll be okay. So um, I hope that today's video gave you an idea how to do a pump down. Um, it, it, it doesn't mean you can't do use a recovery machine, because you might have to use a recovery machine if you have a microchannel condenser or there's a leak in there or you got to replace the compressor. But a pump down is a good way uh, to push all the refrigerant into the condenser so you can work on the line set or on the evaporator, replace the metering device. And then when you're done, you're able to just reintroduce that refrigerant out uh, in, into the line set, into the evaporator. So it's a good way if you don't have recovery equipment and, and um, by doing a pump down. So I hope that today's video helped you out, uh, friends, and I will catch you guys on the next one.